of a political campaign, so the first statement that I make to you, you will find difficult to believe. I shall not make a political speech. In fact, I shall not make a speech at all. I want merely to express to you people some thoughts that I feel today as I have this great opportunity to mingle with so many of my, fe of my fellow Americans. First of all, I am here because I have wanted to repay the great compliment tendered me by your officers when they asked me to act as honorary chairman of the National Field Day. And I am to have the to say to you, my friends, is this. When I come back to this great central granary of the United States, I feel at home. And I have exactly the same feelings of homecoming that anybody does when he goes back to the scenes of his boyhood, the places where he was reared. Then I wanted to come back today because this National Field Day this year is dedicated particularly to soil conservation. I have a young brother who has spent his life in the study of soils in the universities, the state universities of two great states, and he long ago converted me to the need for having an eye for preserving our heritage of soil and water resources for the future. I believe in it thoroughly. And when I heard there was going to be both contour and straight plowing, I had an added reason for coming. And your officers have taken me through the tent where we have been there, where they are showing exactly how much feed it takes to produce a thousand pounds of beef and put it on the city uh, workers' table. I have learned a lot. If I could stay longer, I would learn much more. And finally, my friends, I come today to pay my respects to the plow. Ever since I had the invitation to this meeting, I have been trying to think in my mind of some instrument invented by man that has meant more to them than the plow. I can think of none. In fact, the plow has become the symbol for peace. In the Bible it says, in trying to uh, talk about that wonderful future time when there shall be no war and we shall beat our swords into plowshares. So the plow is a symbol of peace as a sword is of war. And I think, therefore, that no um, group of American citizens can feel closer to peace, feel closer, the need, closer to the need for peace than does the great agricultural community. Finally, I came to pay my respects to the men and women who produce the food and fiber of this United States. You use different methods than were used in Western Kansas uh, 50 and more years ago when I was a boy. Great tractors have taken the places of our horses and mules. You have combines where we had, at the best, binders. And now, some 12%. So each year, the farmer uh, grows more efficient. And yet, the farmer has special problems. And my friends, within a few days, I expect to make a talk. I talk to other Americans in, other, in another area where I will make the main point of that talk, the problems of the farm, the special problems of the farm and the special treatment they should receive. Now, many of you here will not agree with me. Some of you, frankly, will probably think I'm a little bit crazy. But I'm quite sure that none of you will think I am not honest. Whatever I have to say in this speech, I know that is too much to hope. We are humans. Each has his special problems that he faces above all others. But nevertheless, I hold this to be true. If all of us approach all of these problems, the great one of peace, the internal one of the farm problem, and others, if we approach them as Americans and in the spirit 
of conciliation and give and take, we shall find right answers. Only, <laughs> only yesterday morning, I met in Washington with the advisory council that I have met most with of any of the many advisory committees that serve the government on their own time. This was the Agricultural Advisory Committee. On it are men of letters from Cornell and other great universities. There are actual working farmers. There are men who represent the Farmers Union and other and the other uh, farming organizations. But as a unit, they are the people that help to devise every plan, every idea that I have that affects the relationship of the government to Americans, and in this case, especially to the farming community. So, so far as we are able, we get the most efficient, the most widespread kind of counsel that we can. Those ideas, as I say, I shall try to explain uh, shortly, in a week or so. In the meantime, let me express to each of you here, possibly through you, to all of the citizens of Iowa we have chanced to glimpse, the very great appreciation of Mrs. Eisenhower and myself for the cordiality of the welcome we have received. Along the road, to thank two specific organizations here. One, this pipe and drum band over here on the left, who, <laughs> who has done so much to entertain us. The other, the Women's Air Force Band, which I think is probably the equal of any others in our services. At least I am certainly proud of it. <laughs> and now, my friends, I trust that no matter what my duties in the future are, that I can come back more and more frequently to these national field days that you have. They seem to me to be rich in all that is good in America's traditions. There is friendliness. There is a cooperative attitude. There is a desire to, for opportunity rather than for mere security, although we know that security is necessary. So I feel as I told you before, at home. And when a man feels at home, he's happy. I've been happy today, and you've made it so. Thank you very much.